Hello and welcome to podcast 354 of Fights Without Potential, your weekly football manager podcast. I'm Dupin. On this week's pod, I'm joined by Paul, a.k.a. Milaka, and Dave, a.k.a. Dave as a party. How are we doing, Hello. gentlemen? He's are we good? Dude, Dave looks very confused when you said that word, Dupe. You might need to tell him what it is. Uh, Malaka means wanker in Greek. On oh, this fine. week's show, we'll be checking in on my promotion <laughs> chase at Sirencester, and or more importantly, whether Dave has finally managed to win that elusive Champions League slash... Copa Libertadores trophy, or if we we'll hear him say that final, that famous line yet again, this time next week. We'll also have a chat about rebuilds since Joe's released a glorious Manchester United rebuild article on the Five Star Potential website. And because Matt hasn't played FM for two weeks, and the only contribution is usual a shit quiz, he'll be basically Gosh. just a passenger in this week's pod. Um, however, I have been picked up that I'm very, very aggressive and angry at you, Matt, all the time, but. Just let everyone know, I do love Mad. Mad is okay, all right? Um, He's just a bit of a prick. Uh, but before we do that, um, lads, how's your week been, Mad, on a Euro adventure for the last time this season? How's your week been, mate? <laughs> do, we, do we have to talk about football? Can I talk about everything else except football, no? That, that, we can talk about football all you like, my mate. <laughs> no, well, I can't complain. I'm still in Greece, so yeah, you might notice the audio is a little bit off, and hopefully the Wi-Fi will hold up. Uh, having a lovely time, though. Um, I watched the Greek Cup final last night. Did any of you pick up on what happened in that game? No. Greek football is fucking was insane. It so like, it was pa- it was Panathinaikos and um, Aris, and okay. basically, so because of all the shit that's been going on with fans, there there was no fans at the game. So big old empty stadium. It was like throwback to the old COVID days. The game was nil all. There was three red cards. What? Uh, it went to the 96th minute, like the sixth minute of injury time, Panathinaikos scored. All hell broke loose. The rest, so uh, there was a Greek guy telling me that they don't, like a lot of the time in Greece now, they're bringing in refs from overseas because they've had dodgy things with Greek refs. I don't know if they're corrupt or whatever. So this was a French ref and a female French ref at that. And because she gave three red cards, two on one side and one on the other, like she was basically like chased off the pitch and had to be escorted off by the police. Oh my God. I don't know if it's a winner or a loser, but Greek football is fucking wild. <laughs> do you know? Do you know why there was no fans though, Matt? So I do. Um, I I follow a little bit of Greek football. Um, mm. As if Joe was here, I I, I mentioned Greece a lot. I go to Greece a lot. I'm going in a couple of months or weeks. Um, but the where the hell holding the final? Um, it's it was behind closed doors because the 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 ground has no CCTV. No, so I didn't even pick that up. was oh, the wow. reason why they were not able to to do it because the new CCTV has not been installed. Um, so they had to play Jokes. behind closed doors. Yeah, but mental, right? Um, mm. uh, where I normally go is kind of quite a pauk area, um, and mm. when I went the last time, they they beat. Oh, I can't remember who it was that they beat. I'd have to I'd have to search it to be fair. But they they were playing in the early knockout rounds of the uh, Europa Conference League. Mad. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's mm. probably not pointless me talking to you about that. Um. <laughs> Hangs head. Hangs head. Shame. <clears throat> It was proper um, into that story then as well, dude. Yeah, I know. It was, it was a long way. It was, yeah. I went a long way around it. Um, but yes, Greek football is fantastic. I'll tell you what, the Greek fans are nuts. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, my father. I'm going to be here very... for the Conference League final, actually. The Olympiakos in Fiorentina. So that should yeah, be a bit, we're of a, good. bit of madness. Yeah, yeah my, my father-in-law was lucky enough to be at the Greece-Portugal um, game when they won the, the Euros in 2004. I um, was actually here as well when I was 17. Fucking wow. wildest night ever. For hey, a you second. got a Greece more than me. Old. Yeah, my, I got family here, so that's what kind of why I'm here. So, okay. Uh, yeah, Fair I remember enough. that. 17. Very drunk. Talking of 17 year olds. Dave, how are you, mate? How's your week been? <laughs> mate, very good. I actually played at Molyneux this week. Do you know what? I, I'm going to pull oh, you, you up on this right now. Yeah. Go Fast forward. Uh, go back a couple of pods. What was my thing I said to you? Get me you a ticket. Watched. I'm coming to watch. I want to come and watch. Did he that... sort me a ticket out? Did he fuck? Mate, I didn't... Oh, to sorry. be fair, I would have happily paid their fucking prices because they're expensive as well, Wolves. Yeah. Very cool. Sorry. Is, um, that bit, is that a bit too soon? No, I mean, it's it's a good debate. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'll, I mean, I'll quickly touch on that. Yeah, I, the loser of the week is Wolves and the owners 
uh, because we've had season ticket price increases of at least, mine's gone up 16%. Uh, other areas have gone up more. Uh, the the most annoying thing is that the children ones have got and, and disabled ones have gone up like 140 percent in price. But Mad, what like, he's not telling you is he's now gone away from the junior season ticket. He's now at an yeah. adult season ticket. Uh, <laughs> not from under 12. It's under, like under 18, yeah. it's like when you go from kids shoe sizes to adult shoe sizes. No, I've always been adult, mate. No, no, no. So yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, but yeah, ignoring that, yeah, I played at Molyneux on Friday. Um, Tom FM was also on. The, he was on the opposition team actually. Really, Tom Ooh. FM. Yeah. Did he mug you off? Did. You, did, well, did you do more? so heart, uh, I mate, you know what? I, they were like, Yeah, as a party, you're playing right back. I was like, Oh, and to be fair, I've done a lot of cardio work leading up to it, but I've played it more than you before. I was like, The pitch is just ridiculous how big it is. Mm. First five minutes of the game, I combine with a striker, he knocks it down to me in the box, and mate, someone just sm smashes the through the back of me. Um, Time and I look almost also a female ref. I look at her, look, at, she goes, No way, he's won the ball. I was like, What? I thought, if this is not a charity game, you're giving that 100%. Um, and we go in at half-time 3-0 down. Oh, and wow. I thought, fuck. Well, it was weird because everyone was like, we, weirdly, we had created enough chances that we could turn it around. And we ended up winning 4-3, man. It was amazing. Oh, man. amazing. Class game. So, um, yeah, the, I should have some photos over the, the next few days, but they got the video footage. So, any any half-decent clips of me, I'll uh, I'll post them out. So, it'll be a free oh, any, this, compilation, I'm sure. Any half-decent clips will be uploaded every hour. Yeah, yeah. Reloaded. I think all which ones I, I, I put uh, – I think there's probably only going to be two, I think. Because I played in the second half, I played centre-half, and not much happened. But first one will be me claiming for the penalty. And the second one, I, I played an unbelievable ball for the striker, and he skied it. Uh, but they'll probably be the two. What about, like, how many stepovers did you attempt? Surely at least five. Um, I, didn't, uh, I don't think I did any skill moves, you know. I did one where I dropped the shoulder on the striker and then and then played it forward, but I didn't do any others. But, yeah, I debuted my new gold Puma Kings, mate. you got to be a serious <laughs> baller to wear then, you know. But, uh, no, it's good fun, man. A good fun. I've not played there for a couple of years, so it was a good laugh. I'm just glad that I didn't, didn't get an invite to come watch. Uh, I, I did tweet it out, but I forgot. I did forget you asked, to be fair. I did ask. I did ask. Um, okay, cool. I can talk about my weekend, if you like. Yeah, um, go on. And why I'm talking with quite a funny throat. Um, I went to Wembley uh, and watched my team lift the trophy. And I'll tell you what, I genuinely am utterly shocked at how um, amazing football can be and how much it can get you in the moment. Uh, and how emotional it can be to watch your team actually lift some silverware um, and to knock Mad's team out of Europe, which is always fantastic. Um, but genuinely, and I'm and I'm not trying to take the piss here now, but um, I've had kids, uh, no. you know, I was, and I was present at both of their births. You know, I was I was I was stood at the altar with my wife as we got we got married, and none of that gets even fucking close to that final whistle. Oh my gosh, like, not even close. <laughs> There's a video. I'm gonna. I'll probably tweet it out in in the week. Um. There's a video of uh, uh, me at final uh, full time. I'm, I'm recording the full time whistle, and like I am like a, a second and a half ahead of all the United. And you can just hear me. Hey, honest to God, like it was just insane. Like, and I never thought we were gonna win. And I think that was probably the biggest thing. Uh, it was a really good game. I enjoyed it, it even mm. though I watched it. It was a really good game. I think for the like. I was I was I was nervous going to the game, but then I was like, "It's we're not going to win anyway." So we had about six or seven pints, a couple of Jaeger bombs in the in the torch. Um, but... That's um, that's the away teams. Oh, you you guys don't go to Wembley enough, you know. I've been, mate. Um, I've been. I'm joking. I'm joking. You're all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Newcastle don't go often, do you? Uh, but no, like, very, and very much. it was just it was just insane. Um, and then. And then we, when we scored, I was like, oh, it's a jammy goal. We'll, you know, that's it. They're, they're just, the problem with Manchester City is they just have that sense of inevitability. Like, it's going to happen. They're going to score. They're going to win the game. And then we get the second and we kind of go in at half time. And I was actually more nervous at the start of the second half than I was at the first half. So at the first half, because it's that belief. It's that, shit, we can actually do this. And then when Doku come on, man, that I know we've talked oh, about him. Good. We've talked he about him, him, football manager, so much. And, Mm. Holy shit, that kid is is a good footballer. Um, his natural right, right. ability to shift his weight, his, his natural ability to shift which foot he can play from, and like it's just insane. Um, but big, you know, a couple of shout outs for for like um Cobby Maynard again, watching him live for like the fourth time I've watched him live this season, or sixth time I've watched him live this season. 
he is just a, a talent. And I think, I really do think that he, uh, Southgate's going to struggle not to start him. Uh, and that's not my Regency bias. That's not me looking here through Manchester United spectacles. That is just genuinely his composure when we have quite a young squad anyway, it's just going to be phenomenal in that middle. So fingers crossed for him. Uh, he has an exciting summer. I'll be perfectly honest. I actually would prefer him not to go uh, have a summer, you know, because he, he had quite a bad injury in our preseason last year. So that'd be pretty good. But yeah, man. Even for him uh, to sit there, like even just to be part of the setup and part of the squad for the, yeah. the tournament, like just the experience alone would be unreal for him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but it was just an experience that I could that die tomorrow and I'll be happy. I'll be, I'll be honest. And that's, I'll that's tell you me. one thing, Dupe. I don't really. I'm not a huge Bruno Fernandez fan, but that oh. awareness, no look. I was like, what? 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 I, I first, my first reaction was, how is he not shot? Why did he not take a shot? But like, oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I watched it back, and I was like, at what point did he actually see my new? I, I was trying to figure it out because he so, didn't even look at him. He's got his back turned. Crazy. I'll be honest, and this is something that, um, due to my love of football. I watch games back, regardless of mm. if we win, if we lose, if I've gone to a game or, or if I've watched it on TV, uh, I, I'm very lucky to have MU TV. And normally about three or four days later, they put the like the full 90 minutes up. I've watched every game this season a couple of times. And I just, because I just like to see how you how we set up and stuff like this. So it's, it's, it's a bit sad, I'll be honest, but it, that's just <laughs> the way I am. But the joy is, is like, I've come away from the cup final and we've been able to watch like we've got BT, uh, BBC and we've got the ITV coverage and I've watched both back. <laughs> like I've watched both of them back because different punditry and stuff like that. But mm. one thing that's really interesting and like they, they have all like the behind the scenes stuff on, on YouTube, which is really cool. But that lead up to that goal, you see Bruno, like they've, they've, they've analyzed it and like he, he looks like four times before he, like whilst he runs 20 yards, which is mental. Right. But, that that's quality, and and the pass is quality. And there's not many people in the league that would that would actually a not shoot in the cup final against your rivals, but also be have that ability to to see that 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 pass. Um, but when you when I was watching Kobe against De Bruyne, because he was when he was in defensive transition, he was very much man marking him, following everywhere he goes. I could not believe the amount of times that he he kind of checked to see where he was. We counted that in like. In a 10 second period, his head was just constantly like he was watching a fucking tennis match. It was just constantly going like this, right? And I I just don't understand that. Try and like walk down the street and do that, right? Try and walk down the street and look to your left every half a second and like work out how you can just concentrate on what you've got to do, concentrate on building those two pictures. And it's just like it's it's amazing. And I mean, that's not just him, that every player does that, but these top level players do that. And it's just Blows your mind that they can do that sort of thing, you know, that spatial awareness and that just being able to read the game so well and it fucking blows your Vision mind. 20. It's just mental. Yeah, it really is. Um, mm. so yeah, happy days. Uh, and now they're gonna sack him. Um, and and that's yeah. gonna be the end of that. Um, but no, awesome work. Uh, I'm I've always been ten arguing, only because there's no one else to kind of come in. But um I, you know, I've seen some shit games this year. I've seen us lose 3 0 to Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. I've seen us lose 3 0 yes. to uh, Bournemouth, I've seen us lose 1 0 to Palace. Uh, you know, I've seen some shit games this year. Um, so I deserved that, I think. <laughs> but um, I was going to say earlier, I saw a clip, and sorry to Paul, the uh, misery on uh, Mad. I saw a clip of Newcastle fans on the last game of the season saying, You're a big head, Ole Ole. <laughs> oh, <geez>. oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, it, it was in it was inconceivable that Man United would win the FA Cup. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like nobody's I, absolutely. Cup. But again, oh, what, dear. It, it's you know, like football. everyone everyone talks about stuff in Football Manager, and it's like you you see the memes going around in Football Manager. It's like oh, you've won twenty out of twenty games, and you play bottom of the league, and then look, you lose fucking two 0 or whatever. Right? Mm. That was that was that sort of game, you know that. Okay, now if, if it was Dave manager that he'd have saved and reloaded and just been like, that's, that's bullshit. Do you know what I mean? That is utter bullshit. And we could have played that game again today and we'd have had a completely different result. It was just solely on the desire. It was solely on the fact that we turned up, they didn't. And a lot of people have been saying, oh, you know, City was shit. But I, I personally don't think that people are given the credit that we made them look shit. You know, and we did actually, was so defensively structured and so defensively compact 
and Tenar got it spot on with his tactics and and that the the levels of aggression was spot on. Martinez offering fucking Kyle Walker f- a scrap in Wembley Car Park is one of my favourite moments. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, you need to go and watch the breakdown of that where he's literally just like pointing him. He's like in the car park. Come on, let's fucking go, which is just insane. But um, yeah, you know it's quality. Uh, I think I, I think it was weird. Also, I had so many texts from people that are football fans that I know. And are nothing to do with Manchester United, but we're cheering Man United on because nobody likes City, uh, and their fans are shit. Uh, and I was very shocked by how bad their fans were uh, in a cup final against your rivals, a, a team that you're a lad of my a mate of mine who was at the game with me. He put a hundred quid on Manchester United to win, and he got fifteen to two in a two horse race. Right, he got fifteen to two with bet three six five uh, bet responsibly, um, but. Um, at two 0 up, they cashed it out. They instantly pay it out at two 0 up. So like, what? Coventry were five to one to beat Manchester United in the semi final. We were fifteen to two to beat City. So like, there was better odds. In yeah, in theory, nice. Coventry had a better chance to beat us than we had to beat City. Yeah, so beat City, that's insane. Yeah, it's just one. <laughs> it's just one of those games, like. We play that again tomorrow, mate. It's a completely different out, uh, outcome. But yeah, t- two trophies. Happy days. Here we go. Um, I'm talking of trophies, bit, yeah. talking of trophies, I oh. cannot wait to hear all about Mr. Azapardi's Copper Libertadores because he knows what the problem is. If he hasn't done it in the next couple yes. of weeks when nobody's expected anything, there's going to be a really random tweet coming from Azapardi's. Do I need to get my Grammarly out, Dave, or have you got the polish out? Um, there's been some major changes. Oh, major oh. changes. Dilly dilly, <laughs> and it's really not the route that I expected to go down in in this save. Um, so obviously I was with Palmeiras, um, in Brazil. It was in, in terms in terms of the league. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, I think this time last week I was unbeaten in the league, and I thought, yeah, I would love an unbeaten season. Um, like the Invincibles would be amazing. We had a little, little bit of a wobble at the end of the season. We lost a couple of games, but ultimately we still won the league by twenty points. We just absolutely demolished the league. We were, we were brilliant. Um, so league, no problem at all. Um, in terms of everything else, we went to the um. Couple of bits of Doras are beating River Plate 4 1 in the first leg, 4 2 in the second leg. That's when we had our little bit of a wobble. So we lost once in the league. We lost again in the league, the consecutive game. Then we bounced back with a couple of wins and then we lost the final game of the season in the league. So our form was a little bit shaky. And then we played Sao Paulo in the Copa Libertadores final. Um, so Sao Paulo finished about fourth or fifth. So Still did well in the league, but in terms of points, I was miles ahead of them. Uh, so went into that game, 10 minutes in, take the lead in the final. I'm bringing my hands together thinking, yes, this is it. They equalised after 22 minutes, so one all. Um, and then but before half time, I go 2-1 up. Sound happy days. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, do I change the system? Do I stick? Because it's it stung me so many times over the last couple of seasons where I've tried to change the system, especially when I'm holding on to a game or whatever. Um, so 2 1 up, they score literally straight after half time. So 2 2. I was like, fuck me, it's a good job I'm, you know, not a dog walker because I literally cannot hold on to the lead at this point. Go 3 2 up, happy days. <laughs> Six, 62 minutes, 3 2 up. And I'm thinking, this is it. We're going into the last 10 minutes of the game, 3 2 up. Sao Paulo score again. Free all. Not like this. Not I was like, like this. Fuck. I was there like, right, free all. Let's just get it to extra time. 81st minute, like straight after they go four free up. And I was like, how is this happening? And in the end, I have to throw everything. They score a fifth, oh, 91st minute. And I end up losing the couple of minutes to Doris final oh, five my free. God. <laughs> so I'm like, shit. Dude, you're like, having a good week. <laughs> so listen, no, no, listen. So I, I'm thinking there, like I've had such a good season, like immaculate season. How have I thrown it away like like I did? So I was thinking, can I be asked to go through the whole Sao Paulo State Championships, all the league again? So 
I was just looking at different jobs and it's really not the route that I wanted to go down. And it's quite funny considering the topic that we're talking about. Manchester United offered me a job. So United had just won the Champions League the year before, I think, but they were seventh in the Premier League. Tried a quick look through their squad and the players were just like, just like unbelievable, like ridiculously good players. So I was looking at that, I was thinking, it's not, the European Champions League, it's not really the route I want to go down, but at the same time, it might just give me that little nudge to get another trophy and I can just keep going and I won't have to worry about it. So I was in talks to United, basically ended up going, getting that job. But there, you know, I was in real financial problems with Palmeiras. Manchester United at the moment, I mean, minus £230 million pounds debt to the club. Still got, an okay, yeah, still got an okay transfer budget, but like in serious debt. But the, 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 so I'm in mid April, so towards the end of the season. The story's been mad with United, to be fair. So I joined them 2nd of January, I think. My first game was in Manchester City in the FA Cup. So I started Easy. with Manche the Two Manchester one. Derby. 2 0 down at half time, oh. beat them 3 2 in the FA Cup. Love it. Um, since the rest of January, unbeaten. Um, beat uh, Aston Villa like my next two games of the Carabao Cup semi final. So United were already in the semi final. Beat Aston Villa across two legs. They were still, although they'd started really slowly in the league, they were top of the Champions League. Um, you know, it was the Swiss league rule, so they were top of the Champions League. Um, and I was like, sound okay. Throughout February, unbeaten again. Uh, we've beaten fucking we we're smashing teams. Beat Fulham five 0 Beat Brighton seven 0 the Carabao Cup final was against a championship team in Middlesbrough. We beat them 5-1 in the EFL Cup final. I was playing teams like Wrexham and Gillingham in the next next couple of FA Cup rounds. So I beat them, uh, beat Gillingham 6-0, beat Wrexham 7-3, beat Sheffield United 7-1 in the league. And then we get to March, Champions League, round 16. Play Real Madrid. I thought, shit, it's going to be tough. Burn about for the first leg. Beat them 3-2 of an 88th minute winner. Stink out Old Trafford to get a nil-nil draw in the second leg, so I'm through to the uh, the quarterfinals. Although I have lost my first league game, and this is good for you, Mad. It's against Newcastle, so you'll be happy about that because they're chasing the title. Newcastle doing really well, actually, in this save. Mm. FA Cup quarters, we play Liverpool. I beat them after extra time with ten men. Um, some big wins again, and I've just finished the Champions League quarterfinal playing City again, and I've beaten them one nil in both legs. So. 2 0 winning. So I'm now in my next few games, which again, I will have, I'll definitely have the season completed by next week. Uh, FA Cup semi final. I didn't say, I didn't say anything. I didn't say I win a trophy. <laughs> then FA Cup semi final against Arsenal. I've got Barcelona in the Champions League semis. Um, but I think this is like Barcelona, like back to their best. I say that a few years since they've won the Champions League. But they have won the league four times in the last seven years. So it's going to be a tough game. They've still got Xavi as manager as well. And But then in, the, in terms of the league, they were seventh and I'm fourth now, like comfortably fourth. Five points off the league, at the top of the league, doable but tricky. But now nah, they've got a really good team. Um, but yeah, the, the bottom line is I haven't won the Cup of Libertadores, dude. That's the bottom line. Who's in the other semi? Uh, good shout. Uh, Arsenal and Newcastle. Uh, oh. Arsenal are second in the league, and Newcastle are third. Okay, so does this if mean you, I, yeah. I get a tweet? Does this? Does this? I think that's fair because I, yeah, I, I said that I was good to win the couple of his doors. I was that, com I was that confident. So. <laughs> okay, right. He's cooking. I am now. I'm willing, as a friend, oh, hold to on offer now. you a double no, or quits. Okay. Okay. So if you win it with Man United, my my club, we're quits. Yeah. If you lose it to Man United, you've got no 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 tweet, no tweet, but you gotta give me your mum's phone number. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not offering you a double of quits. I will be. Uh, I'll send you the tweet. I'll send you the exact time and date that I want you to schedule it for. Uh, and I want you to forget about it. And we'll see what happens when it comes out. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I lost a bit. I mean, in terms of, uh, very quickly, in terms of squad, if anyone's actually bothered. I, yeah, uh, to be fair, I was going to say, my next question yeah, was, me too, yeah. is there anyone that I would know? That's yeah, there? so there's obviously a lot of new guys. Casemiro like is probably still there. 13, <laughs> 13 years, 14 years to say. So they've still got, he's set to retire this season. Uh, Marmadash Vili as the backup mm -hmm. goalkeeper. 
Um, they've still we've we've got here a guy called I think is it all says Jimin, Jimenez Jimenez. He plays a River Plate in real life. I think he's a um, he's he's a, a real he is a real person. Uh, we've got um, there is a few. Jao Veloso, who's a, new, uh, a very good young Portuguese player, he's like he's really good, so he's he's legit. Uh, Pedri, from he's thirty four mm. now, but he's still very very good. Um, so he plays central mid decent. with Veloso. Um, a guy called Noah Darvich, he's a German player. Oh, yeah, 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 German, yeah, yeah. Definitely. He's he's really good. Um, a guy called Jason Van Duyven. Um, he's actually all right. He misses a lot of penalties for me. I think he starts a PSV in game. Really good player. Uh, da- oh, David gosh. Washington, the one that, that plays Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, I've not really played him at all. Uh, and that's all, really. I was going to quickly David, see... David, I'm going to insist that if you do yeah. draw, if you do beat Barcelona, and if Newcastle beat Arsenal, live stream Champions okay. League final, I'm, we're going to have to insist on this. That's I just don't I understand how that becomes your second Champions League and then you're going back. Uh, that's and that's why it's not, to... not, it's not really the route that I wanted to go down, to be honest. I think almost like if you win this, it, it's time for a new save there. No, I've got to I'll finish it. No, nah, I don't think you will. I just need I, mean, to, I just need to because I'm I don't understand how I don't understand how you then go get a job in Japan. It's been I nearly don't... ten, it's been nearly it'll be nine. No, yeah, we not uh, no no eight in game seasons since I won the Champions League with Super Sport. I need sure. another one. I'm thirsty. You do. Um, but I'm at, like tweet. going Tim Sherwood again. I've got an, a 72 win percentage still. I'm, uh, I'm smashing it everywhere I go. I just keep bottling it on the big games. And you got your gilet on. Yeah, mate. So <laughs> yeah, go. But the, the good thing is, obviously, at United. I've already won silverware. I've won the Carabao Cup already. So that was nice. Um, and my, my win percentage at United is 80%. We're doing really well. We've only lost two games out of 26. So we're cooking. Nice. So this time next week. Yeah. This time next week. <laughs> that's the title of the pod. We'll see what I, happens. I'm not, I'm not going to offer you a double. I, I'm, I'm still saying thinking I should offer you a double or quits, but I, I do don't. Do you want my mom's number? You can have my mom's number if I don't do it. I don't want to. I, I don't want it again. I've already got it. Um, I know, I'm not going to offer you a double of quits because I think I think you're going to win it. You're not going to do a good side. Um, and I'm not going to offer you a double of quits. It's a shame. A lucky, a, a lucky look back. I, you know, I wasn't trying to add pressure. I was just trying to give you a bit of motivation because um, you could have wrote a good tweet for me. Uh, and now I've got to write one via Grammarly. So, <laughs> okay. I hope you um, are. Mad, you said you've not played much. You've been sunning it up with your Speedos in Greece, I guess. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yes. Yeah, I haven't. I'm dying to get back playing uh, this, this, what is it, the region here at South Shields. Love you uh, saving, can't remember the same. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's been two weeks, yeah. um, but I will be cracking back into it. I'm I'm home basically at the end of the month, so 31st, so it'll be going back into it once I get back. It's awesome, my work, my mate. Okay, uh, let's just pick a little bit up with uh, Siren Town. Um, obviously, I haven't been streaming. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure whether I'm going to come back with this save. Uh, and let me kind of explain why at the end of the update. But um, we, we've just moved into February. Uh, we mentioned in the last pod that we were out of the FA Cup. We lost a Tottenham, a home game, 2-1. But it meant that we had a sellout, which was always fantastic. Um, and everything was kind of in our own hands. We were sat second in the league. Um, we had games in hand on on first. If we win all of our remaining games, we go on and, and we win the league and we get promoted, which is fantastic. And we had quite a good buffer to third, like which was down into the playoffs. So it would take something fucking drastic. And February was fantastic. Um, we scored 12 goals in two games at home. Uh, six against Wimbledon, six against Stockport. Um, I mean, granted, Stockport scored five. Um, <laughs> and we won 6-5 with a 90-second minute winner. Um, but that's fine. Uh, and uh, AFC Wimbledon, they scored three, so it's six three. So we're conceding lots of goals, but we're scoring lots. Uh, that carried on with MK Dons. We scored three against them. We beat them three nil. Uh, Leighton Orient, we beat them five two, uh, and then we went and beat Salford two one as well. So February was a perfect month, all greens. And I'm thinking this is fantastic. We, after the Salford game, we were then top. We had a game in hand. We were top. Um, second was um was Barnsley and 
we had to play Barnsley at the end of March. So a nice little crusade. If we won all of our games in March and then lost to Barnsley, we could still get ourselves promoted for four games to go. Fantastic. We went and played Ipswich Town at home. Smashed them all over the park. Complete sellout. 6,000 fans in the ground. Perfect to see. It's always good for the finances as well, um, but it's also good for the team because we always seem to play well when we've got a full crowd. And then things went a little bit pear-shaped. Nothing changed. No injuries. No suspensions. Just, just pressure. Like I know it's hard to kind of say. Does pressure? Is it a real thing in Football Manager? Like this was in our hands. We had eight games to go. We only had to win six games in those eight games. One of those games was against top. Uh, was second in the league. The rest were just against easy teams. Like we could have beat them easily, but we didn't. We only won one game in our last seven uh, in our last eight games. Sorry, we drew si uh, we lost six of them and we drew one of them to Charlton, which meant on the final day after losing to Crew, we slipped down into third place and Swansea went into second by a point. And look, what we said this earlier in the update, like previous episodes, like forty six points was was my target. Um, 46 points would have got us up. I kept us up one point above Oxford United this year. That was my target. And like we are way above target. And we, again, we, we mentioned it earlier. It's the hope, you know, that belief that the, the more and more time that we spent at the top of the league, the more and more kind of expectation that actually this, this could be a thing. And I kind of needed to give my head a bit of a wobble, to be honest. Um, we spent 10 weeks or 10 match weeks of the 46 top. We spent 43 weeks in the top two. We started the, the season not in the top two, and we ended the season not in the top two. The rest, we were just on fire. So we did really well. We, we should be proud of what we did. Like I said, we, we talked about the finances behind it. We were miles behind what everybody else was on. Um, our net spend on, on salary, um, Swansea, who came second, £19 million pounds a, a, a year. We spend 1.51 million pounds a year. So the difference is huge. We shouldn't expect what we what we've done. We've got to be proud of what we've done. The only issue is now is is we're level on points with Bolton. We're very close to Ipswich on points. It's very tight for us in this in this playoffs. It's not a straightforward playoff. Um we actually lost our first first leg of the playoff away to Leighton Orient. We lost 3-2. They scored an 86th minute winner after we went 2-1 up after 25 minutes. I'll be honest, I was just, I just, I think I sat there for about 20 minutes, just staring at the tactics, thinking, what the fuck am I doing? We have done so well this year. We haven't got injuries. Why can we not just pull some fucking results out of our ass? Didn't change a thing. I looked at, you know, like when you sit there and you kind of tweak a few things and you go, oh, maybe we need to play, start the wing backs a bit further back. We might need to, you know, add an extra man in. I kind of just went around tweaking a few things and just went straight back to what we had. Um, I started a winger called Stefan Franklin, who had played quite a bit, but he he kind of went off the boil. I started bringing him on as a sub and he was a bit more of an impact player. Um, but I brought him on uh, for, for the home leg against Leighton Orient and he scored within five minutes. And I was like, praise the Lord, right? It's a level on point. It's level on, on aggregate now. Within a couple of minutes, Leighton Orient scored. We then scored two before half time, giving ourselves a bit of a clearance. And I was thinking, right, let's just shore everything up. Let's see what we can do. And then our centre back gets injured and our centre mid gets injured within about three or four minutes. And we are limping. I, you know, I'm, I'm putting players on. I'm trying to make people work where they can. And then Leighton Orient score in the 79th minute. He goes to extra time. Now, I think the, the joys are we're at home to a sellout crowd because we then go on and score two goals in extra time and win and get um, find ourselves at Wembley. But the fact is that we were so on the ropes and like we we shouldn't have got quali we shouldn't have qualified for, for the for the playoff final. But we're there and that's all that matters, right? Fifty one thousand at Wembley for the League One playoff final. Eight thousand of them are Sarancester Town fans. Like this is like it's almost like the FA Cup final with the with the city fans. There's just none of them there. Um I don't change anything. I, I well, the only thing I do do is I, I drop my on my inside forwards to wingers. 
And I'm like, I'm just going to start slow. Don't want to push people too far out. Let's sit them a bit deeper. Um, and I, I've, I've changed. I had two DM supports. I changed one to a ball winner midfielder support. And I'm just trying to sit a bit deeper, soak the pressure up for the first 10 minutes. And then the plan was to go long, basically Bolton, Bolton. Sam Allardyce, Bolton, Bolton. It was the plan. Mm -hmm. Go long and just hit and hope. We had some big boys at the back. We had some pacey boys at the front. And I kind of changed my game plan as we went along. Well, the first highlight of Wembley was obviously me walking out with my shorts. I can't believe that they don't give you like a, a final outfit. They should give you a final outfit on FM <laughs> because I've been in shorts and T-shirt all year long and flip-flops. They didn't give me the option to put a suit on, and I think they should. So there you go, little little suggestion for FM 25. Um, but yeah, first highlight, kickoff. We roll the ball back to our centre-back. Ball gets lofted up top, drops to Casey. Bang, 1-0 in the first minute. I am swinging. Like, honestly, God, I am chuffed a bit. I then decide to keep everything as it was with, you know, defensive, keep the wingers on support. We're 1 0. They've got to come to us. Uh, we then double our league in the lead in the 70th minute with Casey again. Very similar goal, long ball over the top, bang. Uh, and then Barry White, right, who I always call Barry White, but Barry White makes it 3 0 in the 78th minute and we, and we got promoted. And I am buzzing for Jeez. it because. The run of fixtures at the end of the, the, the season was just horrendous. You know, and I, I, I should have seen it coming because even in January, we drew four games on the bounce, you know, and it was just, we were papering over the cracks and how the fuck we got promoted, I honestly don't know. We're now in the championship and I'm scared. Yes. I am proper scared because we are up against some big hitters in the championship and we are, we're minnows like we are proper minnows um just to name a few of the teams um you've got massive massive teams in here i.e forest green are in the championship which is mental right uh, but you've got teams like birmingham norwich sunderland luton hull sheffield united you know we've got who got some relegated big actually do you have who got relegated like in Oh, in Premier League, cause yeah so, the, so the, the three that come down were we uh fulham leicester and stoke um okay. so we got some we got a tough division here really mm. tough division and i thought league one was going to be tough but this is going to be really tough our bank balance is brilliant with the promotion um our projections are fantastic everything's looking really really good the only issue i've got is i've got 74 grand a week to spend on on wages and you're probably thinking that's a lot of money and it is a lot of money you know my highest earner at the moment is earning three grand a week you know and that's he's up here everyone else is under two grand a week the issue i have is the reputation so at the end of the season they, they, they give you out the reputation list we are still as a rep of a team lower than most vanarama national south and north teams because our rep is just so low which is a bit of a shame because we've done some good fa cup stuff you know we've had some good little runs we've, we've played some big with big sides and we are in the championships. You'd like to think that kind of the turn of when we become a championship side. So, you know, you have that bit at the end of the season to when they do the fixtures and then you actually become a championship side. I don't know whether that rejigs it a little bit. Yeah. But at the moment, it might, um, yeah, it might. I'm going to, I spent about five, six, maybe seven hours going through my squad thinking, right, we're going to keep you, you're going. And basically a lot of them are going, a lot of them are out of contract, but I can't get anyone in. Like, I can't, the, the only player that's agreed to come in at this current moment in time is a shitty left back from fucking North, from Ireland, but Dave has a party. Dave has a party. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> he's agreed. Uh, he's a but well, he's agreed a contract with me, but he's on a free transfer. But um, he's been going to say, sorry earlier, you know, when I was on about you know, with my United uh, set team, we played Real Madrid in the Champions League. I, I didn't even click, but I was playing, and he Davis party side for Real Madrid. I was like, oh shit, That's yeah, I've actually played against him. But mm -hmm. I tried to get him um, in the January window, and they wanted like two hundred million for him, man. Fuck you know, uh, he ain't worth. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm ever going to manage him. And it's so peak. He's a right back. Well, he might he, he might come to us. Um, he's interested, but there's a there is a few shit clubs that's really interested in him. The, the issue that I've got is like I'm going for him, and then you've got teams like Macclesfield. Um, who are in the Vanarama National, they are interested in him. You've got people like Crawley, Tamworth, 
you know, Northampton, which is teams that are like in the National League and we're in the championship. So like his, his quality obviously isn't there, but it's the fact that he'll probably pick one of them over us. So we've got a really big challenge. Um, we are going to touch upon it in a very short while because we've, we've actually gone on quite a while here, but um, I'm not sure whether I want to bring this back to Twitch solely because I've now had two seasons off of the Twitch and I don't know whether I want to just kind of pick this back up and go, oh, look, we're here. However, I do quite like the idea. I've done it before with some red star save that I've done where like I quite fancy loading up a stream, start preseason, send the, the save out to like out to everyone and go, right, let's go find some players, a scout together, you know, and whilst I'm in the stream ticking along, they can, people can do kind it, of su make it. suggestions and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I am very tempted. It's just, it's, I feel that we're a season too early and I think we're going to get obliterated here, but I guess we'll never know. I guess there's only one way to find that's, out. Right? That's the content I would subscribe to, Dupe. Well, you already subscribe anyway, so I appreciate that. Um, the one thing I will say, the minute that we got promoted, <clears throat> sorry, my voice now, the minute that we got promoted, I uh, I asked for a new contract and they've given me a three-year contract. So um, I think we're safe. It's pretty good. Um, and I have apparently, I have a uh, the attributes now 17 for motivating. So, uh, I mean, look at you two. You're fucking motivated. So what more can we do? Uh, one for adaptability, though. So <laughs> say no more. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of everything that's going on at, at Science Just the Town, mate. So it's all exciting. Um, Fair play. It's been I've a... got two adaptability, but 20 motivating. <laughs> nice. Chilling. Yeah, but you're, you're, you are at Man United, so you've probably got more better attributes than me. Yeah. That's oh, no, cool, Dude, man. You, should, you could extend the bet with Dave to say you might win the Champions League before him the way he's carrying on. No, nah, he'll win the Champions League before me. I'm Man United, definitely. Probably not. Um, look, I'll, I'll be honest with you, gents. Uh, I think that's probably a lovely way to end. I know that's, uh, I mean, unless you've got a little quiz you want to bet, I think we bring the, the spotlight next week because. Um, yeah, we've, got, we've had a yeah, lot of Man U chat. We could do we've had a lot of Man U chat. Yeah. yeah. What we could do, what we'll, what we'll tell the listeners is maybe check fivestarpotential.com, have a read of Joe's Man United yeah. rebuild piece because we're going to talk about it next week. Uh, yeah. Make some notes and bring your, home, that's your homework for next week. Yes, we're now giving homework. Yeah, <laughs> Are you, uh, have you got a quiz? Because I know Dave's ready to go for a sleepover, so. <laughs> oh, no, I'm ready for the Ooh. quiz. I'm going to edit this first, mate, so. <laughs> oh, shit. I got, all, I got all the dinner <laughs> on a Sunday night. Quiz. Okay. We can do a quick quiz. You, you can do it together, actually. So it should, yeah, that would be sweet. It should move fairly quickly. I assumed correctly and regrettably that we would talk a lot about Man United and Newcastle Man for obvious United. reasons. Uh, so that's the theme of the quiz, lads. I have a list of 11 players who have played for both clubs, Manchester United okay. and Newcastle United. All you got to do is guess them together, starting okay. from now. Andy Cole. Andy Cole is correct. 244 games for United and 73 for Newcastle. Michael Owen. I can't believe he went straight for Michael Owen. Jesus. Mm. Michael Owen is correct. 40 caps for United and 70 for Newcastle, apparently. Nicky Butt. Mate, you keep thinking of all the ones I'm thinking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky Butt is also correct. That's three. Would you like the next guess? So I can I got I got a few more. Literally everyone that smudge. I've Smudge. Who? Alan Smith. Smudge. And, uh, smudge, is that his nickname? Yeah, because he had the blonde hair or Smudge. Ah, yes, yes. Alan Smith is correct. Actually has more appearances for Newcastle than he did for Manchester United, which I didn't know. Good player he was. Mm, until he broke his leg. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, I, got, I got a good one. Go yeah. on. I can never say his name. De Debravka. Oh, yeah. Martin Martin. Yeah. I think he only Dubravka. played like three or four, or maybe one or mm, yeah, three appearances for us. Two appearances for Manchester United while I'm looking but for... But he played one time. enough. Well, he actually played... They must, they must have both been in the Carabao Cup because then he couldn't play for you, could he? Yeah. yeah. I believe so. He got a medal, didn't he? So. Yeah, he got, he got a medal whilst still being at your place. <laughs> Against it's amazing. Oh. Yeah. Just can't, um, just, just can't cope. Uh, Gillespie, Keith Gillespie. Keith Gillespie is a shout, correct. Only nine appearances for Manchester United, but 126 for Newcastle. I used to love, he used to be on uh, Colin Murray's radio show when he was on Talksport. Yeah, just like 
he just basically talked about me and pissed all the time. It was going on. Yeah, he did a lot of that. Yeah, he did. Um, you have five more players. I should have mentioned it was Premier League year, obviously. That's, I'm trying that's to think, man. Danny Simpson. Daniel Shall. Simpson, Premier League winner with Leicester, not Manchester United or no, Newcastle. Mental. I don't know if he ever won it with Man United, actually. Six uh, appearances uh, for Man United, but 129 for Newcastle. He might, he might have been in the, the, like, the thing, but he wouldn't have won a medal mm. with that amount. Oh. So you now have one, two, three, four remaining on this Oh, uh, Gabriel Obertan. Shout. <sighs> Is he right, Dave? I think so. Overtown's played for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He is indeed Scored Gabriel against over 10. For you, Only I 20 believe. appearances for Man United, but 68 for Newcastle. Correct. Three to go. Um, Dave's going to pull out the bag now. Back post. I'm trying to think. The, all the ones that I thought like my Nicky Butt one stuff was niche. And mm. I was like, it's pretty <laughs> obvious, but. Nicky Butt's quite obvious, yeah. I could throw you a couple of bones if you like. Oh, um, oh, did he? Yeah, Louis Saha. Nah. Louis Saha. Yeah, he played did play for both yeah. clubs. One hundred and five appearances. I say Saha. Well, I couldn't think. I couldn't picture him in the United kit. Eleven <laughs> on loan. Uh, not United. New I was going to say. Mm, the real United, yeah, I know, Dave. Eleven <laughs> appearances for oh. Newcastle United uh, in nineteen ninety eight. Uh, he was on loan. Two more on the list, boys. You have a defender, and you also have a striker. Uh, <coughs> it. Oh, did he play? For you? You Bless might have you to give us a little bit of clues here. So I can tell you. No, it may do like, I don't know, like. Yes, maybe. I have a, I have here a defender. 132 appearances for Manchester United between 1996 and 2001. But only three appearances for Newcastle in 2004. So you probably saw an older maybe. Norwegian. Potentially. Ronnie Janssen. Ronnie Janssen. Champions League winner, Ronnie Janssen. Right. I is score. the correct I answer. First live Manchester United goal I've ever seen. Was Ronnie Janssen? Yeah, 1999. We went, to, uh, we went to the Coventry game and he scored yeah, for Manchester right. United. I know, there you go. We are Striker. going to... Striker. striker. Yes. Bellion. Oh, no. No, he guess. He's no. as a party at the back post, but he heads it wide. Oh, <laughs> I I've pictured Bellion. Sunderland, Sunderland. Oh, I knew yeah. it was one of them. Mm. A better one. Yeah. Chief. Picked him in the stripes, mate. This striker, I can tell you, made five appearances for Manchester United in 2005. And 11 appearances for Newcastle United Fuck. in 2006. Strike. This is apt. I would say this lad is a bit, bit of an FM wonder kid of sorts. A bit. Foreign or English or foreign? Not English. Oh, not Giuseppe Rossi, no. Oh, good shout. Yeah, he is. As he a paddy, is. as a party rises at the back post, his name was. he hits the yeah. back of the net. <laughs> I, I knew it was an Italian. I just kept thinking of Makeda. Kept thinking of Makeda. Yeah. Italian striker. Rossi is it's really classy as American or Italian. He was both Italian. funny. Bit of both. Was, I think he was uh, from America as well. Oh, was it? Nice. There's your Watch list, lads. Well done, Dave. I knew David get. I knew he'd pop up for the last. <laughs> Mate, time. I just texted him. It. I just wanted him to get the credit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, awesome, chaps. That brings episode three hundred and fifty-four to a close. Dave gets to go to a, a sleepover. I get to have dinner. 
and Mad gets to go back for it's a bit of ouzo. Uh, you can find yes. the links for each of us in the podcast description or by visiting fivestarpotential.com where you can find all of our latest football manager content, including that spotlight from Joe of Rebuilding Manchester United. Five Star Potential is available on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and most of our popular podcast apps and platforms with a new podcast release every single week. Thank you all for listening. There'll be more from us next week. Say goodbye, folks. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye, folks. Galley Nicta.